call it stock car racing. And nowhere else is the fine art better displayed than at the Lancaster Speedway at Lancaster, New York. The half-mile paved oval just east of Buffalo, New York, had its greatest season in 1970 in producing the greatest drivers in the East, including the New York State Modified Champion, the All-Star League Individual and Team Champions, and the Langhorn National Open Champion. Each racing season, from April through September, the fans pour through the gates to enjoy their favorite sport, to cheer their favorite drivers, Last year, over 200,000 thrilled to Lancaster's varied race programs, backing up the fact that auto racing is the number one spectator sport in the world. Whatever the fans' interest, the Lancaster Speedway has something for them. Whatever they like, late model stock cars to midget autos, foreign compacts, the mini stocks, the roaring modifieds, special events like auto thrill shows, fireworks, championship races, family fun, it's there for all to enjoy. While the fans are piling in, the stars of the show are arriving. There's Ed Ortez of Ransomville, Cordy Treichler of Sanborn, and Maynard Troyer of Rochester with his Ford Falcon modified stock car pulling into the pit area. The stands fill early, crowd eager, ready, waiting for the first race to begin. It's a time to get settled for a big afternoon of racing. In the pits, it's a different story, as mechanics, car owners, drivers prepare for the challenge ahead. Every nut and bolt is checked and rechecked. Maybe a little polish will help. Engines are given a thorough going over. The race cars are mere shells of automobiles with only the bare necessities and all important safety features left intact. This man went on to become the late model champion of 1970. The hottest board of the circuit at Lancaster is the Falcon driven by Maynard Troyer, whose winning combination includes a great pit crew and great engine specialist supplied by a major Rochester Ford dealer, Dave Nagel. The ever-present welder is probably the busiest man in the pits, as he goes to work in last-minute touches. Later, he'll be busier in getting damaged cars ready for the big ones of the night, the feature races. looking for is in here somewhere. Getting down to work is more than just an expression to most crews, and this rear view is a common sight in the pits. The activity becomes more frantic as race time approaches. Wheels and axles get special attention, and the cars are allowed to take practice laps on the half-mile track. 
Big Leo Leondowski has some changes he'd like made after a few warm-up laps. Something's not right back there. Waiting is the hardest part for a driver. Waiting for your chance at the big payoff for first place. Is everything okay? How about that tire pressure? Is the suspension adjusted right? Am I getting the most out of that motor? Can I get around that lead car, number 56? The engine is warmed. Shoulder straps fastened. I'm ready to go. And the rest of the field is ready too. At last, we're going on the track. One by one, the cars head onto the oval, lining up behind the pace car. The next 20 laps, 10 miles of racing will tell the tale. In the pit grandstand, mechanics, car owners watch intently as their man on the track goes through the parade lap behind the pace car before the feature race. Sportsman lineup gets the same story. 24 cars, 24 drivers with one thought in mind. I'm going to win this one. The younger set and the mamas and papas, families, watch for their particular favorite to appear. Dress is optional, especially at races early in April or late in the fall. Some help themselves to goodies offered by the concession stands. Some just sit and wait impatiently. Others talk about what's to come. Of course, the track must be clean of all debris. A small stone can cause a flat tire. The national anthems open each show. American and Canadian, as Lancaster hosts many Canadian drivers and fans. A qualifying heat has Pete Snyder in the 56, chased by Dave Hafner in the yellow car. Close race, but Snyder wins. Snyder's mechanic plays it cool. Winning comes easy to a champion. His main concern is getting ready for the next race. Herrick of Rochester pulls out of the pits in his 61 Ford for another qualifying race. Out of these qualifying races will come the starters for the big feature event. And the pressure is on.
the excitement on this face. The orange number 38, driven by former champion Jim Wetzler, breaks loose and spins out in the third turn. It's a yellow flag, a caution signal that means slow down and maintain position. The race is on again, and look out, three cars pile up in the third turn. And once again, the yellow flag comes out. off the track, backwards. We're in luck, nobody hurt, so the ambulance is not needed. Watch the red number 14. Some cars need watching. out of the race. Let's try it again. Backward. Backwards. He's pulled backward. towed off the track. And by this time, the driver of the number 14 knows his car is a real... <coughs> Folks in the announcer's tower need a little bracer now and then. The winningest driver at Lancaster in 1970 was a mini stocker, the number 30. 1970 Japanese Toyota driven by Fred Rounds of Lockport. And Fred's winning all but three of the mini stock feature races of the season was all the more remarkable considering he drove the car using only his hands for steering, braking, and throttle. Tell us a little bit how you handle that uh the clutch and brake work in this thing, uh, accelerate. All hand operated, hand clutch, hand brake. There's two gas pedals in there, two brakes. In case one doesn't work, we can use the other one. Two brakes. Right. How exactly do you steer then? If you're working no. the brakes and the no, accelerator? You steer with one hand and use the other hand for the other. For the other two? For the other two. Okay, do you uh, anticipate the winning the championship out here this year, or this car looks like it's gonna go? We're gonna give it a try. Very good. Talking to Fred Rounds, a number 30 mini stock, a 1970 Toyota. The scrappy little mini stocks perform on a smaller one quarter mile track, which uses part of the half mile oval for the front straightaway. And the action they put on is tremendous. Volkswagens, Renaults, Simcas, Saabs, all makes of imported compacts mix it up in the 15-lap feature event. The winningest driver, Mr. Rounds, collects another trophy and a kiss from Miss Emily. You're a winner. You always win. No, this is the first year of that. I did run Volkswagen for a while, and I had a lot of trouble with those, and uh, blew quite a few engines in one year, so I decided to try something different, and uh, I got the opportunity to buy this car. It was a total wreck, and uh, well, I thought it would make a good race car, so we made quite a few changes because we designed our own hand controls. Uh, the last two cars have had the same controls in them. What kind of problems? Uh you encounter throughout that feature race. Just getting through the traffic is about all. He 
passes Tom Schmitz's Volkswagen. He takes Lauren Tiffany's Saab on the inside. For a moment, the number 22 holds him off. But Rounds passes him too. with the number 61 and the number three man in the division, Mike Hayes in the number five Dotson. Next to be knocked off are George Johnson in the 98 and the number 18. Ron Burling in the three is passed. And after a great chase, the second place point leader, Ron McDonald, in the number 15 Dotson is beaten. It's another feature win for Fred Rounds, champion of the mini stops. A man very familiar with the checkered flag in 1970 was Roger Treichler, last year's champ who collected a lot of hardware. And some software, too. Wow, not bad. The man who won it all, though, was Cousin Merv here collecting a winner's rewards in duplicate. A big trophy and another kiss. And another. Some guys have all the luck. The very potent number 58 coupe gets a lot of attention. It carried Merv Treichler to the Modified Championship at Lancaster and the famous Langhorn Speedway. The brothers Treichler, Gordon and Roger, confer in the pits, and everybody smiles. But on the racetrack, it's every man for himself, as the twin cars, the 47 and the 74, duel side by side. Bob Hudson in the number 10 is passed. Edmoni of Batavia hits the rail in the fourth turn. Then Hudson and Bill Brainerd slide into the first turn. Again, no injuries as our ambulance driver watches. The big moment for any driver is winning the big one. A 30-lap modified feature race. And Ed Ortez in the white zero car is on his way in this one. Merv Treichler chases. Chuck Booz of Lewiston in the white coupe broad slides through the turns. The white flag is out. One more lap to go. And the winner is Ortez of Ransomville. A proud daughter on the right is overwhelmed with the victory. She'd really like to shout, that's my dad. Feature races off. There's a spin out. Of 
Gordy Trichler in the 47 shoots for the lead, desperately trying to pass the yellow 17 driven by Pete Hayes of Lockport. He closes, but the effort proves too much for the car and driver, and Trichler is over the backstretch rail. Brother Roger. On Thursday nights, the Speedway resounds to the roar of the drag racers charging down the 1 8 mile strip in the family car or in custom made super powered machines. Special match races during the year feature the tops in national drag racing stars. Flashing Christmas tree gives the go signal and you come out of the hole. Wild paint jobs, deafening roar of supercharged engines, plumes of tire smoke set the scene. The trick setups from all over the country draw the drag fans by the thousands. Here's a real speedster. It's Freddy's Funny Ford, a special attraction for the kids on their special night. Freddy has some trouble. He's out of the car. He's taking apart the engine. <laughs> 